This is the TARD helmet. TARD stands for Tactical Assault Rapid Deployment. This run of helmets is something I did as a joke, just to make some bump helmets that looked kinda cool and carried a historical connotation. They carry no ballistic properties. But what if they did? This is the TARD Mark II. The Mark II is the same Chinese replica steel shells, but with the added benefit of having several layers of Kevlar and resin bonded underneath the steel. In its current form, it has very little to do with the original M1 design, ditching the whole liner system and adding a new chin strap as well as the Kevlar like mentioned before. Coverage is minimal compared to the M1 being that it is a high cut helmet. My goal with this helmet was to be able to stop 32 auto from a handgun. But let's kick it back a little bit and start with something smaller, 22 long rifle. Interestingly, the first round of 22 managed to just barely penetrate the final layer of Kevlar and actually fell out of the helmet shell when I shook it after picking it up. The second one merely cracked the steel with no penetration. By NIJ standards, the penetration of the first 22 round would be considered a failure, and this was a little concerning for me. On to 32 Auto next. Oddly enough, neither round of 32 auto penetrated and both had very little deformation internally. When compared to the 22 long rifle, this has some interesting implications. It's my thought that the subsonic velocities of the 32 caused it to fail, whereas the 22 long rifle, traveling at supersonic, was just barely able to squeeze through the Kevlar. Seeing that the helmet managed to stop the rounds I set out to stop, I moved on to higher calibers from here. I'd like to include a caveat about the next test. I lost quite a bit of footage while making this video, and I understand that's annoying, but I managed to find a couple clips that survived the testing process. I hope that this is enough to satisfy your interest. The helmet managed to stop every round of 38 Special we had with minor deformation, not enough to harm the wearer. Next I tried number 4 12 gauge buckshot. Again the footage was fucked, but I managed to pull some stills, and as you can see here, it skipped over the top and left some minor deformation. I shot it with one more round of number 4 buckshot, and once again, all the pellets impacted, but none went through. I didn't really expect the helmet to survive 12 gauge, and even being number 4 buckshot, you'd think it would have destroyed the thing, but it stayed intact. Short of any other calibers, I had no recourse for testing this helmet, because those are the only rounds I brought with me. When I first started making this video, I set out to do it as professionally and scientifically as possible, but it's not anywhere near as impressive as if I managed to have footage of the helmet being shot. Technical difficulties screwed up a lot of this project, and what you're seeing here is what I managed to salvage of it. This result's pretty upsetting for me, but I hope you as the viewers can understand and appreciate the effort I put forward. That being said, although you're going to have to take my word for a lot of the ballistic claims that I've made, the fact that a homemade, scratch-built helmet managed to stop this many projectiles 
That's pretty impressive to me. Well, that's going to be it for today. Till next time, this is Fairfax.